Hello Varlets, today we're going to be taking a look at the veteran's talent tree. I've been reading and hearing that the vet has the saddest talent tree compared to the other classes. One of the main reasons being the absence of keystone nodes to add more complexity and depth into its bullcrafting. In this video, I'll show you that there's a lot more going on for the vet than meets the eye, with hidden interactions and mechanics, and how, by fully understanding the vet's kit, you can bring out its potential when designing a build for it. Warning, this first section is going to be painfully detailed, so please skip ahead if you feel your consciousness fading away. To kick things off, we're going to start with the Shredder Frag Grenade. The Shredder Frag Grenade is a simple ability. You throw a grenade, it explodes, it staggers enemies, and it causes them to bleed. Starting with the stagger, enemies closer to the center of the blast are staggered more than enemies further away. This is the simplest thing you'll learn about the Shredder Frag Grenade today. Next is going to be its blast damage. The frag grenade in general does a respectable amount of damage if it detonates next to an enemy, and different armor classes and even enemy types receive different amounts of damage. Here's a table I've put together to show you the damage each armor class and specific enemies take from the blast damage. As you can see, the effectiveness of the blast damage varies with the different armor classes with carapace and flak taking very little, even when augmented with grenade tinkerer. The different monster enemies in the game also take different amounts of damage, though given their immense health pool, it's probably best to save your grenades for the stagger rather than the damage. Frag grenades also experience damage falloff. That's the amount of damage lost based on the distance from the center of the blast. In this case, frag grenades can only do their full damage as you saw on the previous table when they are literally right next to or under your enemy. This is because frag grenades suffer from massive damage falloff after 2 to 2.5 meters. Here's another table to show you the falloff damage. This table shows you that after 2 to 2.5 meters, a frag grenade loses 61% of its blast damage and from there drops down to next to nothing at the outer edges of the explosion. Taking Grenade Tinkerer does help increase the effective blast radius, but it doesn't help that much with the steepness of the falloff. The last component of the Shredder Nades we're going to look at is the bleed aspect of it. With the bleed damage being buffed this patch, I wanted to see why everyone was saying it's so strong. This meant a lot of digging and numbers to get to the bottom of it. Whenever you apply bleed, you cause enemies to take bleed damage. Bleed damage increases with the number of stacks applied. The more stacks you apply, the more damage the bleed will do. Bleed damage always ticks for the number of stacks plus 3. So if you applied 16 stacks of bleed, which is the maximum, you'd get 19 ticks of damage. The first 3 ticks will be the full damage of the 16 stacks, and every tick after will tick down and remove 1 stack's worth of damage until all stacks are removed. There's also a timing element to this. If the stacks are applied too fast, you actually end up getting less ticks. If you apply them too slowly, the early stacks can expire and result in you having lower damage than expected. There's a lot of timing mechanics to solve and I'm really struggling to wrap my head around it. So while my answer probably isn't going to be 100% on the money, it does explain how bleed works as observed for the most part. But you don't have to think about it as hard as I have. Here's another table for you showing you how many stacks of bleed deals how much damage. So in this case, the frag grenade's bleed damage would be this string of numbers added together for a total of 302 damage. The reason there are only 8 ticks here instead of 9 is because when a stack of bleed is added, an additional tick occurs combining the two sources of bleed together, I think. While the blast damage of the grenade has a steep falloff, the bleed damage is not affected by blast radius. So as long as enemies are within the blast radius and take even a little bit of the damage, the bleed is applied to them in full. Now if you're looking at the table and you see tested on unyielding Ogryn Gunner and wonder if bleed does different damage to different enemy types, you would be correct. Here is, you guessed it, another table of bleed damage dealt to the different armor types. As you can see, bleed does next to nothing against carapace and does alright damage to everything else. Because of their relative health pools, bleed is most effective against flak and infested enemies which tend to have lower HP than the other armor types. But what if one grenade isn't enough? What if you threw two grenades out? How much more damage would you do then? Well, I'm glad you asked, because here's another table I happen to have to display the bleed damage dealt at 12 stacks, and the total amount of bleed damage enemies would suffer, assuming the two grenades explode back to back, or you'll probably lose a stack from the first one. This table shows you that bleed damage scales very high. Enemies caught by two blasts will probably end up bleeding out. This means picking up the grenade tinkerer talent is even more attractive, since you effectively increase the area of bleed coverage by about 56%, and if you are feeling lucky, Taking Twin Blast can sometimes clear a room full of enemies with a single toss. Now, because this is a talent tree review, I'm going to keep this simple and not bring other variables outside of the talent tree into what comes next. Because you have to take Longshot in order to get access to the Shredder Frag Grenade node, 
I'll consider that talon note as part of the Shredder Frag Grenades package. I bring this up because Longshot, which increases base range damage by up to 20%, depending on distance, affects both the blast and the bleed damage of the grenade. That's right, you can squeeze out even more damage from your Shredder Frag Grenades by being further away from enemies when it explodes. The damage bonus from Longshot starts at 8 meters and caps out at around 30 meters. So if you want to maximize your grenade's bleed and blast damage, chucking it from 30 meters and landing it right next to a target will do the trick. As a side note, for those of you who have watched my 7 secrets video, the impact of the grenade no longer applies bleed stacks anymore. Looks like they've fixed it to make sense now. Let's move on to the crack grenade. Crack grenades are essentially sticky nades or plasma nades from Halo that can deal devastating amounts of damage to anything unfortunate to get hit by it. These grenades are special. They are guided by the hand of the God Emperor himself. Observe. That is some really, really aggressive tracking which only works on certain enemies like Maulers, Crushers and Bulwarks. As you saw, the crack grenade completely destroyed that damnation level mauler like nothing. Question is, what else can it one-shot in terms of elites and specials? Here is a table for that. Very comprehensive, yes? Now, some enemies like mutants and drake ragers who aren't wearing any armor can't have crack grenades stuck to them. So unless you want to try and time it so they are on top of a crack grenade to deal full damage, it's probably best to save your grenades for something else. Speaking of armor, the crack grenade can only stick onto flak, carapace, and unyielding. Anything else and it will bounce right off. But because enemies are wearing armor, some parts of their body might not be covered and therefore is considered unarmored. For example, a drag shotgunner has an unarmored head, so throwing the crack grenade there will bounce right off. However, it does have armored bits on its chest, arms, and legs. So if your crack grenade lands there, it will stick. As for fall off range, the crack grenade loses most of its damage around 4.5 meters. So while it does have a decent blast radius to take out multiple enemies in one go, it's not so big that it will wipe a room, like a frag bomb. And yes, Longshot does increase the damage of the crack grenade even more, so use it at range. Next, our final grenade is the smoke grenade. This was an interesting one to test. In essence, the smoke grenade does exactly as it reads. It obscures enemy vision and reduces their line of sight. In practice, the smoke grenade acts as kind of a shield. So first off, smoke grenades don't do anything against melee units. They will still run at you even if you have smoked yourself or the team. Also, snipers can still track you through the smoke. What a smoke grenade does is remove your last known location to range enemies, specifically enemies that have guns. This includes trappers and flamers, but not bombers. They know where you are and they will flush you out. Throwing a smoke bomb at your feet causes enemies to do one of three things. Enemies like reapers and gunners will continue to fire at your last known location instead of tracking you. Regular shooters will stop firing at you if they were before and attempt to reposition themselves to find new sightlines or do nothing. Chucking a smoke nade at them suppresses them for a bit and they'll run out to reposition themselves. Flamers, trappers, shotgunners and scab stalkers will lose track of you when the smoke goes off but they will actively run into the smoke to look for you at your last known location. This makes them more vulnerable into being engaged into melee combat as well. Trappers in particular will run almost right in front of you to get their trap off. That's something to keep in mind. Taking Grenade Tinkerer increases the duration of the smoke bomb by 50% to 15 seconds. Moving on, let's talk about Executioner's Stance next. This augment allows you to highlight elites and special enemies, letting you see them more easily and even through walls. This augment gives you more information to work with and makes it a lot easier to pick up priority targets. The Enhanced Target Priority augment allows you to share your wall hacks with allies within coherency, giving them access to useful information on enemy whereabouts. The Relentless augment allows you to keep refreshing the duration of Executioner's Stance when you kill enemies marked and outlined by it. You can easily keep this ability going on and on with the last augment, which is Counterfire. This augment allows you to highlight all ranged enemies in the game, making even regular shooters targets to refresh your Executioner's Stance. These are all the ranged enemies in the game. As you can see, not all ranged enemies are marked. The Reaper and the Scab Stalker aren't considered ranged enemies, even though they have guns which deal ranged damage. Hmm. This combat ability pairs nicely with Marksman to further enhance your weak spot damage to make killing easier and therefore refreshing Executioner's Stance more consistent. Or you can pair it with For the Emperor, giving your allies a damage buff when you activate Executioner's Stance. 
So not only are you giving them vision over priority enemies, but you're giving them more damage to fight them as well. The next combat ability is Voice of Command. You yell motivational words at the enemy, staggering them with your sheer positivity and restoring 100% of your toughness. The Voice of Command has a 9 meter stagger radius and the strength of its stagger is uniform, meaning it's the same strength right next to you and right at the edge of the circle. All but the toughest of monsters and crushers can be staggered by your voice. So using this as a tool to create space is something you should do often when the situation calls for it. Voice of Command has two augments that are supportive in nature. The first is Duty and Honor. This allows your Voice of Command to restore toughness to allies as well, and even acts as a toughness overshield that exceeds your regular capacity. Pairing this augment with the Born Leader passive creates a strong restorative combo, since you always recover 100% of your toughness when you use Voice of Command, 15% of that is restored to allies on top of the additional 50 from Duty and Honor. The other augment for Voice of Command is Only in Death Does Duty End. This allows you to use Voice of Command to revive downed allies at the expense of a 33% reduced radius and a 33% longer cooldown. This amounts to losing about 3 meters of radius and a 20 second longer cooldown. The ability to revive allies without stopping to pick them up can come in very clutch in high pressure situations. Sometimes being able to get the revive off can mean the difference between a saved run and a doomed one. This augment's comeback potential can be further improved with the Leave No One Behind passive letting you grant downed allies 33% damage reduction for 5 seconds after yelling at them to their feet. However, the cost of being able to do this is pretty steep in my opinion. The fact you have less stagger space and a longer cooldown means your defensive capability is lowered. You're only going to have so many opportunities to use voice of command throughout a mission, and an augment like Only in Death this Duty End makes you want to save it for when shit hits the fan. Of course, you can always use tactical awareness and cooldown reduction perks on your curios to improve your ability uptime a little more. The choice is yours. Finally, the last combat ability we're going to look at is Infiltrate. Infiltrate allows you to replenish all your toughness and enter stealth for 6 seconds, gaining 25% movement speed and becoming undetectable to the enemy. When you emerge from stealth, all nearby enemies are suppressed. This is probably one of my favourite abilities from all classes. The ability to reposition yourself freely is a very good tool since it gives you time to breathe, reload and re-engage to your advantage. There are of course two ways to play stealth, either built to get yourself out of trouble or to get yourself into it. And that's exactly what these augments are designed around. Low profile allows you to massively reduce your threat level after you emerge from stealth. This can be great for getting behind enemies that are occupied with your allies. Your lower threat level means they'll continue to try and attack your allies even when you're right next to them. Hunter's Resolve is a decent defensive augment, granting you 50% toughness damage reduction when exiting stealth. Since going into stealth always restores your toughness to full, pairing this with the Iron Will passive can make it so you are one tough reject to break after coming out from stealth. Surprise Attack is a great way to capitalize on your repositioning capability. Moving to an enemy's exposed flanks and raining hell on them with increased damage can be both devastating and very satisfying. Finally, we have Overwatch. This gives you the ability to hold two charges of Infiltrate at the cost of a 33% longer cooldown. This basically adds 20 more seconds of cooldown to each use of Infiltrate. Unlike only in death the duty end, where the cost is too steep, Overwatch offers you the added flexibility in exchange for more cooldown. With the ability to go stealth twice in short succession, you can pull off some really clutch revives to save a run, or even two chances to activate any of the final combat ability nodes like Marksman to really bolster your damage output in a single engagement. This is one of the reasons I like this combat ability. You can do so much with it. Alright, that brings us to the end of this video. There are of course many more tiny interactions between abilities and passives and modifiers and blessings, but for this video, I just wanted to highlight some of the key ones I found while testing out the veteran's talent tree. I hope this video has been useful in helping you figure out how you would like to build your veteran. If you still need help or suggestions, I'll be releasing my first veteran build pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Violets.